I want to hear what Ben has to say. He he made the sweatiest uh, waltz uh, clip. The debut of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz on the national stage, and we saw Kamala Harris introduce him. So obviously, very, very high energy event. Kamala Harris is bringing out gigantic crowds. Democrats are, in fact, enthused. They brought out Josh Shapiro for a little <laughs> bit of a consolation run. He yelled a bit. I don't get it. Like, why is he writing for Josh Shapiro? Why is he wet? That's my first question. My first question is, why is he wet? Second question is, oh my God, how much makeup does he normally use? I'm just noticing a lot of lines on his face now when he's not in the regular setting that he's in. Last but not least, why the f are these guys acting like they, one, really love Joe Biden and were mad that he was swapped out and two, really love Josh Shapiro and are mad that the Democrats didn't go with Josh Shapiro? There is no better example that the Dems did a good thing again than all of the Republicans collectively being like, well, I sure think you guys are anti for not going with Josh Shapiro. And his voice broke and he talks a little bit about being Jewish, which gave Democrats cover to ignore the fact that the explicit reason <laughs> they did not pick him. And then Kamala Harris did an entire speech in which she really didn't talk about politics very much. It was it's so funny. It's like, are they going to be like, yeah, that's why they didn't like Bernie Sanders. Is that what they're going to say next? Like the Democrats actually rat Bernie. Obviously, Republicans are always mad, but they're extra mad now. Mostly about unity. She actually tried to channel Barack Obama slash 2008, circa 2008. She was talking about red states and blue states. She was talking about how she was going to govern for all Americans. And then she gave you the background on Tim Walls. And apparently, according to Kamala Harris, the relevant stuff about Tim Walls is not that he presided over the burning down of Minneapolis and, in his own words, abjectly failed to stop that from happening. It's not that he has praised socialism. It's not that he's blown out the budget to the tune of a 40% increase in the last year. It's not that he has presided over extraordinary fraud in the state of Minnesota. Of course, he wouldn't expect her to say any of those things. If you go back far enough, he was a high school football coach. And don't you know, he's a teacher and a high school football. He's basically Mr. Feeney, but more athletic. He's like Ed Asner, a vuncular, moderate, just one of the boys. You know, a guy who can crack a beer and can shoot a rifle, but is also really, really in favor of gun control and transing the kids. That's basically the pitch. In Bro, he's mad that he's mad that that Walls is too good. In favor of Tim Walls. So she does this routine. These rallies are incredibly well choreographed. I will say that they are very well choreographed. She calls for a chant and a chant goes up. First Democratic rally I've seen for a while where, where people start actually cheering USA. And why are they cheering USA? Because she says, what an amazing country this is. What an incredible country where a person like me. I like that Ben Shapiro is mad that like America is a country where like you can be middle class, like single, like born into a single mother family, like raised by a single mom. And like one day run for president as like a black Indian woman. And that is like the reason why Ben doesn't like America. It's the one thing. It's the one thing he hates about America. He's like, I wish America wouldn't allow those sorts of things. So he's just like upset. Okay. Middle class person or Tim Walls, middle class person can become the president and vice president of the United States. Now, I agree with that, but she doesn't agree with that. She believes that America is systemically racist. So does Tim Walls. Tim Walls said back in 2000. You know, those two things can still coexist, right? Systemic racism can still exist and people from marginalized backgrounds can still thrive in the country. It's like some of the best aspects of America and some of the worst aspects of America. Also, the reason why you love America because of the second thing that you routinely deny even exists and you get paid a lot of money to do that denial. 2020, that he believes that those riots were a reflection of the great evil that America represented. And yet here they are doing the unity routine. And that's what is so false about all of this, is this idea that these folks are real reminders of what brings us together, that what they are really interested more than anything else is governing for all Americans. They are radically to the left. This is why the Trump campaign has a moral obligation to remind the American people that these people are radically to the left. I need Ben Shapiro to explain to me how policies such as paid family leave and medical leave and policies such as free breakfast and lunch programs for all school children in public schools are actually somehow magically harming Republicans. Is he claiming that these policies actually are written in a way where like, if you're like a Republican, if you're like a Ben Shapiro viewer uh, as a school kid, you don't get the free lunch. Is that what he's saying? Like, what, what is this? What is this argument? Like, oh, these radical policies. It's like, point to the policies, Ben. Tell me why it's bad. Because they never talk about it. Okay, so that's all the intro to Tim Walls. Then Tim Walls gets up, and he's quite good. I mean, let's just be frank about this. Tim Walls gives a speech, and the speech is avuncular, and it's charming. He attacks Donald Trump, of course. The lowest point of the speech is, is his attempt to signal to his base that he'll take the gloves off with J.D. Vance. He makes some sort of dumb joke about J.D. Vance getting up off the couch, which is supposed to be a joke about a meme that was going around the internet about a false... I love the cry bullying coming from the Republican Party. They, on a daily basis, lie about everything. Their policy positions are built on top of hysterical lies, oftentimes racist, vitriolic sentiment. But then beyond that, they also lie about all, all manner of different things. But like these guys who regularly lie all the fucking time about every single thing. Now they're going to turn around and be like, mm, J.D. Vance never 
the couch and it's really messed up. Tim Waltz actually brought up the couch thing. Passage that he's against free so lunch. So Ben Shapiro is school. That kids from hunger. Wouldn't it make sense to strengthen food stamps and have school lunch be free since some kids are in school lunch debt? Uh, well, I mean, if you are school lunches are not going to solve the problem of child hunger at any serious level. If, if there is a problem of children actually. That's wrong. That is literally wrong. You're just wrong. You're so wrong. Oh my God. Oh, that's awesome. I love, I love these fucking sociopathic bloodless monsters genuinely advocate against policies that virtually every Republican in the fucking state are on board with. Don't let them run the fucking table on issues that they have already successfully captured the American audience on. Force them to openly explain away their psychopathic, bloodthirsty, bloodless, soulless, sociopathic worldview. It doesn't exist in Hillbilly Elegy. Supposedly, J.D. Vance having some sort of sexual relationship with the couch is really stupid, but it's become a Democrat meme. And now you've got the vice presidential contender who's actually throwing that out there in public. Wink, not even stopped and said, you can see what I'm doing there. And that's the Here's the video, by the way. Let's roll the clip. I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So, you see what I did there? He's such a dad, bro. That is such a... Dude, he has the vibes. Sorry, but it puts a smile on my face because it's like a lot of old head Hasanabi fans know I love that classic like dad joke. I love classic dad jokes because of that Applebee's TikTok. Yeah, like the fucking, I guess they let anybody in here. <laughs> Like he had that locked in the chamber, dude. You can tell, look at his face. He had that locked in the fucking chamber. Now, before you go, I guess Democrats are also running with fucking Twitter memes as well. So the Democrats are using Twitter talking points too. No dog. He knows JD Vance didn't fuck a couch. Okay. He's joking. You understand that there's a difference between him being like, see what I did there? Like a double entendre, also known as a joke versus Republicans being like Kamala Harris is literally not black. <laughs> it is pretty funny that these guys will turn around and be like, I can't believe that they're making fun. I can't believe that they are saying these really mean things about J.D. Vance. How dare they? It's the whole idea here. Meanwhile, don't worry, he's bringing Americans together. Now, at no point were the challenges that actually faced the country ever brought up. The challenges, apparently, according to Kamala Harris and, and Tim Walls, the big challenges are that Obamacare might get repealed. That's like the big challenge. The big challenge is that Donald Trump might ban abortion, which, of course, he has said he is not going to do and has no interest in doing. Yeah, that's crazy, because, like, Donald Trump has always been so honest about his policy positions, or and, and so is the Republican Party famously, which is why every single Supreme Court of the United States justice appointment that Donald Trump made actively lied to the entire American population and... The Congressional Senate, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, when they claimed that they would not overturn Roe v. Wade and that, that it was a super precedent. That's right. They did that. They lied about that. So why the fuck would anybody ever believe them? Oh, my God. At no point was there any talk about fixing the economy. Apparently, the big threat to the economy is the Donald Trump tax cuts, according to Tim Walls. And if those tax cuts were to continue, people might be able to keep more of their own money. And that is a serious, serious problem. Meanwhile, you have Kamala Harris out there. No mention of the fact the Middle East is on. Once again. Hit this line every time. Republicans hit this line. Uh, I know that I said that, like, this is what the Republicans should be running on actively. Uh, when someone asked me, like, how would you advise the Republican Party? And the counter to it is perfect, which is you want corporations to get more tax cuts? Are you out of your fucking mind? You give the working poor $5 off, and then you give the, you let the fucking billionaires run the table. The, the amount of their, like, real income that they're being taxed on at the end of the year is, like, 0.3%. Okay, the average American's real income that is being taxed at the end of the year is like 37%. Okay, it's fucking abysmal how little the wealthy pay taxes. On fire, no mention of foreign policy, no mention of exactly why the Biden administration seems to have taken the side of Iran in the Middle East. None of that, of course. No serious dealing with issues. And that is the theme of this campaign. In the end, that's the theme of this campaign. Ignore everything. Ignore all of the activities of the Biden campaign and the Biden-Harris administration. Ignore all of it. Ignore Tim Walz's tenure as governor. Ignore all of it. They are casting a TV show. And in this TV show, you have the very charming Kamala Harris, who apparently is filled with joy. That's the other thing that we learned. That's another great take. He's seething so hard. He's like actually mad that they look good, that they're telegenic, and that he's stuck with Donald Trump. That's great, man. Yeah, he's he's so... It's just don't watch it if it's just a TV show, big dog. Here, So you got the words unity and you got a lot of joy. According to Tim Walls, Kamala Harris is not weird. Right? That crazy laughter, the... <laughs> that stuff, not weird. That's joy. The weird dancing and the strange motions. That's not weird. Give me the clip, chat. 
Aiden Ross with Donald Trump. I know you have it dialed in, okay? Remember, remember, Kamala Harris is weird because she laughs a lot and she dances, right? But Donald Trump, on the other hand, very normal. That's why when he went on Aiden Ross's kick stream, the funniest part about this is that like Aiden Ross looks exactly like young conservatives now. Like when you when he put this fit on, he looked exactly like the the Yaf boys, you know, the Young Americans for Freedom boys that you see. Like the most annoying person at every college campus. Like he turned into that instantly. Joy. And if you don't understand that it's joy, it's because you don't understand joy. That that okay, so again, all of this is pablum, it's crap, it's insulting crap for people who actually follow politics. But what I fear is that most Americans do not follow politics. And this is why, once again, it is incumbent on the Trump campaign to remind Americans of who these people are. Nobody has ever heard of Tim Walls. They don't know that he presided over the burning down of Minneapolis. They do not understand that Tim Walls, who had people chanting, mind your own business at this rally, literally forced everyone to close their business in the state of Minnesota during the pandemic. He was one of the worst lockdown governors in America. It's up to Donald Trump and team to remind people that. The media are not gonna do it. It's just odd because he's like seemingly very popular. Like Ben doesn't seem to think so, but like the people in his own state do think that. Like they think he's popular, they like him. I don't really understand. Like, how about you mind your own fucking business, bitch? What do you mean? Much as conservatives like I will complain that the media are not doing their job. Of course they're not doing their job. Because what we think their job is, you know, to do journalism, is not what they think their job is, which is to provide cover for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls long enough that they enter the White House. So let's not make a mistake about this. The Tim Walls pick, it's going to have a lot of vulnerabilities that Trump can attack, but Trump has to do the attacking. There's certainly enthusiasm. There's certainly talent on the left side of the aisle. People forget that Kamala Harris on the stump can be quite good. We've seen so many clips of her being a weirdo that it's easy to forget that she actually got ahead in politics by being pretty good on the stump, at least from 2019 on or so. She hasn't the, the road yet. The rubber's not met the road. She's not been asked a tough question. But Republicans are going to have to do that. I don't want to open my YouTube and see 100 Kamala Harris Tim Walls ads. The Trump campaign needs to be dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into introducing the Harris Walls. How the fuck do you not have, uh, dude, why is he so sweaty? He's so wet and mad. It's weird. 